just want to be a bit personal at first. I've been a teacher at Umo University since the beginning of the 90s in peace and conflict studies. And I've taught many students at different universities in Sweden and meeting a lot of master students from all corners of the world. And I worked with education for all my life. And actually, it started by being a bit angry. Not a bit, a lot angry, because I felt when I was going to upper secondary school that the university, the school system has failed us with giving us possibility to learn about the challenges that we as a young people faced. And at that time, we talked about uh, the risk of the atomic bomb falling on our head. I was in that age at this time. And uh, there was a lot of people who are out on the streets. And I felt, what should I do about it? If I don't do anything, who should do it? If I don't do it, so when? So I need to take a personal stand on this. Uh, so I was out in every upper secondary class in my hometown, Luleå. Each one of them. I go to the heads, to the principals at every school and ask, can we have some sessions on the arms race, about arms trade? And they let me to do it. So that was the start for me. And then I came to Umeå University. There was only a a minor course in peace and conflict studies at a Center for Interdisciplinary Science. Um, and that became a whole program today. International Crisis and Conflict Management. Interesting. So why I'm talking English? It just felt natural because <laughs> I have my Kenyan friends with me. Okay. You have to start somewhere. And I was to make an introduction to this uh, afternoon. Because, as you have seen, we have a long time frame, a quite long time frame, when these areas that we talked about is on the agenda. From 1945, from the Declaration for Human Rights, until now when we talk about the super year of the SDGs, uh, and the meetings in Addis Ababa, in New York and Paris, and so on. But you can also see that the question of education has been there. It's been stated as one of the most important things when it comes to human rights, regarding social, economic, and cultural sustainability, the right to education. It comes in various conferences, global international meetings, World Conference on Education, United Nations Decade on Learning for Education Sustainable Development. And it's now an approach to get a global action program on education for sustainable development. And uh, I just read the, the UNESCO roadmap. Uh, and they start by saying, Politics, money, and technological solutions is not enough. Because if we don't work in our educational systems, we will fail. We have to learn so many new things and reinvent the old things to get some new stuff pieces together. So the approach that Mark has thought about together with Lloyd Timberlake involving hundred universities is extremely important. Education is a foundation for getting things done. And there's a lot of things written in these kind of documents. You can even become bored of the technological language. But the overarching goal for this global action program on education for sustainable development is scaling up we need to do a lot better at our universities than we have done before. Of course, there are very, very positive, high-quality teaching, education, research, but we need to scale it up on a level that we 
Today, I guess we don't can, can, cannot imagine. And there are some prior, prioritized areas in this document as well. Maybe we don't need advancing policy as much because we have so many documents telling the same thing that is urgent, we need to do, and so on, so on. But transforming learning environments, how it is in the classrooms, in the schools, in the systems, and training educators and uh, trainers, the teachers, who should do it? Do they have the capacity and the capability? Uh, the fourth is empowering and mobilizing youth in this global action program. So that's sort of a message. And accelerating sustainable solution at local level where people are actually living. So it has to go on the ground as well. So I think you really should raise your voices to, towards your uh, leaders at your schools, university, and, and get them to provide you for the education that are, are entitled to and that they need. So that was okay. The global agenda includes education as well. So thank you.